Hi there, Michael here. A few weeks ago, I published a video about the 10 most important immersive audio formats. And within that video, I mentioned the 1881 introduction of the theatrophone by Clement Adair as the first immersive audio technology predating surround sound by decades. Back then, I felt that there are probably more surprising facts about immersive audio that deserve a mention. So today, we are diving into the wild, wonderful, and sometimes bizarre history of immersive audio with more surprising facts that will completely change how you think about 3D sound. From World War I giant ears to dummy heads that fooled fairgoers, this door is proof that spatial audio has been blowing minds for over a century. Before we jump in, this list is completely subjective and based on my research into the most fascinating corners of immersive audio history. I'd love to hear your favorite immersive audio moments in the comments below. And with that being said, let's jump right to the first one. Hellblade's Whispering Voices, Gaming's Psychological Breakthrough. You're so close to the darkness. Go back. Can you feel it? Hellblade is an award-winning 2017 indie game which used banal audio to portray the mental state of its protagonist, Senua, who suffers from psychosis. The game's audio team recorded voices using dummy head microphones, capturing whispers and murmurs with full 3D spatial cues. When you play with headphones, you'll hear disembodied voices sneaking from behind, sudden shouts over your shoulder and mocking whispers that fly past your ear. Many players described stopping to look over their real shoulder because the illusion was just so convincing. This wasn't just a gimmick, it made players actually experience auditory hallucinations. Try this tonight, put on your headphones and see how immersive audio can tell stories that regular stereo simply can't. I know what she's thinking. I hear her thoughts. Quadrophonic vinyl, ultrasonic secrets in your grooves. Long before Dolby Atmos, the 1970s saw a bold attempt at bringing four-channel audio into living rooms through quadrophonic vinyl records. The most technically intriguing format was JVC CD4 Quadra Disc System, which actually hit four channels of audio in a standard LP groove. The rear channels were encoded in an ultrasonic frequency band around 30 kHz above human hearing, riding on a high frequency carrier embedded alongside the normal stereo signal. Think of it like having a secret message written in invisible ink on every record. To decode it, you needed special cartridges and demodulators, but when everything worked, you got true discrete surround sound from vinyl. The complexity killed it commercially, but quad vinyl was analog spatial audio decades before we had the digital tools to make it easy. Holophonic Sound, the virtual barbershop that terrified listeners. In the early 1980s, Argentine inventor Hugo Zuccarelli introduced Holophonics, a 3D audio recording method that produced some of the most realistic audio illusions people had ever heard. The famous virtual barbershop demo featured sounds of barbers cutting hair around the listener's head. When heard on headphones, people genuinely felt like someone with scissors was circling right next to their ears. The spatial realism was so uncanny that Pink Floyd worked with Zuccarelli on their 1983 album The Final Cut, using holophonic recordings for buzzing flies, footsteps and voices moving in space. Imagine hearing a fly buzz past your ear from a stereo recording. That's the psychoacoustic magic Zuccarelli achieved. Search for holophonic barbershop online and prepare to question everything you know about audio. Disney's Fantasia, surround sound in the 1940s. Walt Disney didn't just give us innovative animation with Fantasia, he introduced audiences to something they'd never heard before, multi-channel immersive sound in movie theaters. Disney's Fantasound system used an unprecedented three-channel plus effect speaker setup to engulf audiences in classical music. This was the first commercial film released in stereo sound with music and effects panning across speakers decades before surround became standard. Because 1940s theaters weren't wired for anything beyond mono, Disney personally installed Fantasound equipment in just 13 specially equipped theaters. Audiences felt like they were standing at the podium with conductor Leopold Stokowski, hearing instruments from different directions. It was surround sound 40 years before Dolby made it mainstream. Disney proved that immersive audio could transform storytelling, a lesson we are still learning today. Lou Reed's binaural albums, rock music in 3D. 
1978, Lou Reed broke new ground by recording his album Street Hustle entirely with a dummy head by now microphone designed by German engineer Manfred Schunke. This made it the first commercial pop rock album recorded in 3D binaural sound. The dummy head had microphones where human ears would be capturing music with natural spatial cues. When you listen to Street Hassle on headphones, you hear instruments and voices in a 3D soundstage around you, not just left and right stereo. Reed was so pleased with the effect that he recorded two more binaural albums, Life, Take No Prisoners and The Bells, using the same technique. This was rock music you could walk around in decades before virtual reality audio became a thing. Put on Street Hustle with good headphones tonight and experience how a 1978 vinyl record can create surprisingly vivid 3D audio. Before we continue, if you're finding this video interesting, do me a favor and hit like and consider subscribing for more spatial audio content, tutorials and reviews. Thank you so much for your support. Ambisonics, the BBC's forgotten full sphere experiment. Long before virtual reality audio plugins, the BBC quietly funded an in-house periphony project that became Ambisonics, the first full sphere 360 recording and playback system. Beginning in 1970, mathematician Michael Gerson and physicist Peter Felget developed the four-channel B-format signal and the tetrahedral sound field microphone, which stored sound independent of any loudspeaker layout. The BBC actually broadcast Ambisonics on national FM radio in 1977, encoding entire concerts so anyone with a decoder could hear true 360 surround over their hi-fi. Regular stereo listeners heard a normal mix, while decoder owners experienced full spatial audio. The public barely noticed manufacturers wouldn't commit after the quadvinyl disaster and the project was shelved by the early 1980s. But Ambisonic's elegant mathematics resurfaced decades later as the backbone of spatial audio for virtual reality and game engines. The BBC's lost surround format was simply too far ahead of its time. Alan Bloomline's 1931 surround sound patent, visionary beyond belief. Alan Bloomline, often credited as the inventor of stereo, was amazingly ahead of his time. In 1931, Think about that date, Bloomline filed a patent that not only covered stereo sound recording but envisioned full surround sound decades before it became reality. His lightbulb moment came while watching a movie with his wife, noticing the frustrating disconnect between on-screen action and audio from a single speaker. Bloomline's patent outlined techniques for placing multiple microphones and speakers to create directional immersive sound fields for both films and records. By 1933 he had demonstrated stereo records and by 1937 Bell Labs was testing multitrack stereophonic film systems based on his work. This means concepts like panning audio between speakers were being explored in the 1930s. Blumlein died in 1942 before seeing surround sound adopted, but his early patents show that the vision for 360 degree audio has been around for nearly a century. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. World War I sound locators, giant ears for enemy planes. During World War I, armies developed large binaural listening devices to locate enemy airplanes by sound. Essentially massive artificial ears that looked like giant horns or oversized stethoscopes. By comparing the time and intensity of engine noise captured by two or more horns, operators could pinpoint the direction of incoming aircraft. This early acoustic location technique used the same principles of stereo hearing that humans use, just scaled up for long distance listening. It sounds incredible, but long before radar existed, militaries were using 3D audio cues via metal horns and human listeners as an early warning system in the sky. Picture soldiers with giant mechanical ears scanning the horizon for spatial signatures of enemy engines. Once electronic radar was invented, these acoustic locators quickly became obsolete, but they represent one of the first military applications of immersive audio technology. Two radios for stereo, the 1920s living room experiment. Decades before stereo records or FM radio, American radio engineer Franklin M. Doolittle conducted an incredible experiment in 1925. He broadcast live audio in stereo by using two separate radio stations. Listeners were invited to use two radios, one turned to the left channel and one to the right, to hear early immersive sound in their living room. Doolittle spaced two microphones about seven inches apart, roughly the distance between human ears, to capture a directional sound image. 
Those with dual radio setups heard clearer, more realistic sound, as if the speaker's voice was actually in the room rather than thin monophonic audio. He even obtained a patent for this binaural broadcasting setup. The experiment proved stereo audio could create a lifelike impression, but it wasn't practical. AM radio was too crowded for two channels, and few people owned multiple radios. Still, it's remarkable that by the mid-1920s, pioneers were already thinking about immersive two-channel sound, years before stereo became mainstream. Oscar, the dummy head that blew minds at the 1933 Chicago World's Fair. The first true dummy head recording for immersive audio dates back to 1933, when Bell Labs' Harvey Fletcher created a mannequin head with microphones in its ears, a system nicknamed Oscar, to capture sound exactly as a person would hear it. Oscar made his public debut at the 1933 Chicago World's Fair in what became a legendary demonstration. Bell Labs set up 20 to 30 headphone stations in a semicircle around a glass enclosed stage where Oscar sat. A person would walk around the dummy head while speaking and fairgoers listening on headphones could hear the voice moving all around them in real time. The glass prevented any communication through the air, but the listeners were startled by hearing the voice from Oscar's perspective, circling around their own ears. This was decades before high-fidelity stereo or digital audio. Imagine 1930s audiences suddenly experiencing 360-degree sound through headphones. Oscar was essentially the first binaural recording system that used an artificial head, proving that capturing and reproducing 3D audio was scientifically possible. It would take many more years for this idea to catch on, but the World's Fair demo showed a glimpse of our immersive audio future. And there we have it, more surprising facts about immersive audio that prove spatial sound has been fascinating people for over a century. From the early days of banal audio to modern gaming audio, the human quest for realistic 3D sound never stops evolving. If you found this video interesting, hit that like button and consider subscribing for more videos about immersive audio technologies. Drop a comment with your favorite immersive audio moment or any surprising fact I missed or join our free Discord server for a chat. An invite link is in the description below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.